Welcome everyone. Today's lesson is entitled The Unit Circle Research and Labeling. This is a follow-up to the introductory lesson on the unit circle, and in fact this is going to be a pretty quick one. Uh, we'll just do a very quick review, and then I'm going to actually kind of send you on your way to look at the website that I have on the, the sheet here, and you're going to use that to fill in that big blank unit circle down at the bottom of your sheet. So why don't we go ahead and dive right in and uh, answer these three pieces, and then I'll tell you what I want you to do as you go ahead and do the research part of this particular lesson. So uh, I guess first and foremost, and this is, a, I think, a very important conceptual piece as we start to really understand the unit circle, um, what does the T value represent? So if you remember specifically on the unit circle, the T value has a dual meaning. And so let's go ahead and write that in here. First and foremost, it represents the radian measurement of the central angle. Okay, and that's nice. Not the degree measurement, but the radian measurement of the central angle. And that's important as it opens up that whole branch of trigonometry of real numbers. So it's the radian measurement of the central angle. But as I had already alluded to, it's, it has a dual meaning. So this is the most important piece. Put a big and right here. And what it also represents on the unit circle, very simply, is the arc length. How far around the unit circle, either counterclockwise or clockwise, um, are we going from that initial spot? So again, it's the radian measurement of the central angle, and it also represents the arc length. Now this only occurs on the unit circle. That's the big thing, and that's what makes this such a very interesting and helpful visual representation of the six trig functions. And it comes along with this question right here, what is the radius of the unit circle? And uh, as the name suggests, it is literally one unit. And so if you're still kind of wondering if you, or if you potentially forget from the previous lesson, well, why does T have that same meaning, the radian measurement and the arc length? It comes back to our representation of the S equals R theta equation. So if you remember in this equation, S represents the arc length, R represents the radius, and theta represents the central angle measured in radians, again, not in degrees. So again, theta is the radian measurement of that central angle. Well, what we've uh, you know, basically came up with last time around is when the radius is one unit, which is exactly what we're seeing on the unit circle, then S and theta are the same. The radian measurement of the angle is the same as the arc length. And again, it just helps us visually start to outline the six trig functions in a very meaningful way. Okay, so what are those six trigonometric functions, or again, the ratios that we'll be beginning to develop? So let's start with sine. And remember, it's all about input and output. So we take the sine of our T value. And that T value, again, has two meanings. And when we take the sine ratio of T on the unit circle, and again, only on the unit circle, it represents the Y coordinate. We are going to expand these six ratios beyond the unit circle um, very soon. But for right now, seeing that the sine ratio on the unit circle is the Y coordinate helps us understand some of the specific values that we're going to be seeing. Okay, so sine of T equals the Y coordinate. And if we remember correctly, cosine of t equals the x-coordinate. Very nice. Just continuing along here. Again, you already have this, so I'm going to go a little quick. Tangent of t. So we've got sine, we've got cosine, we have tangent. The tangent of our t value is a ratio of y to x. Okay, and let's see. Now we do the reciprocals. So that would be cosecant, sorry, C-S-C -C there. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. And so if sine is the Y value, then on the unit circle, and again, only on the unit circle, are we talking about cosecant being 1 over Y. And this will change when we start to look beyond the unit circle. But for right now, that's, that's how we're going to define it. Okay, and then uh, secant would be the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine is the x-coordinate, then secant would be 1 over x. And then lastly, the last of the six here that we're going to be able to develop would be the cotangent of t. And cotangent of t 
is very simply x over y. All right, so those are the six. Do need to know those pretty well as we move forward. And again, we will revisit these, dealing with right triangles, and then dealing with any angle moving in circular motion. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, it's time to, for you to fill in a unit circle with some of our notable or special angles that we're going to be seeing over and over again. And so there are a variety of websites that you can use for this. I just picked this one right here. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is just find that website if you would, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and bring that up momentarily. And then what you're going to do, just down at the bottom here, I gave you a nice big blank unit circle, and you're going to fill in with the key values. Um, I said you don't have to necessarily do degree measurements, but if you want to, that's totally fine. And then you're going to be putting the ordered pairs out there. Remember, all of these key values and uh, trig functions are related to the ordered pairs that you're seeing, the x's and y coordinates. And so seeing those visually on your unit circle here will be helpful when I start to ask you, well, what is the sine of this t value? What is the cosine of that t value, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking just initially. I have this uh, kind of laid out. So this is what uh, your website will, will look like here. And to notice it's just kind of a filled in version. And so what you're going to do for me is, is put in the t values. I kind of like having it putting, in, uh, putting it in right here. Again, the degree measurement that matches up with the radian measurement, I'll leave that up to you if you feel it's helpful. But you should know these degrees and radians corresponding together. You should know pi over 6 radians is 30 degrees. You should know 3 pi over 4 radians is 135 degrees, et cetera, et cetera. Now again, for some of these notable t values, you'll see very specific x and y coordinates, and that's what you're going to need to put uh, on your blank unit circle as well. So I'm going to give you uh, the for instance here. So uh, in this particular case, here's what I'm thinking. I'll just go ahead and write in like what you should be doing for one of them, and then obviously you'll fill in the rest. So this one right here, this terminal side represents a t value of pi over 6. Now, what does that mean? Let's just quickly talk about that. So on the unit circle specifically, what that means is the radian measurement of this angle right in here, coming from the initial side, rotating counterclockwise to the terminal side. So that would be pi over 6 radians right there. That's what it means in one respect. But it also means on the unit circle that if I start at this initial point and go counterclockwise, if I go pi over 6 units, I would end up exactly here. So this arc length is exactly pi divided by 6 units. This radian measurement of the angle is exactly pi over 6 radians. So just remember what that means specifically on the unit circle. Now again, if you want to put the degrees, again, I just don't want to confuse it too much. But you can go ahead and maybe put in like parentheses there, because 30 degrees is not a t value, because it does not represent, this is not 30 units right here. This is 30 degrees as a degree measurement of an angle, because 30 degrees as an angle is, um, is, is equivalent to pi over 6 radians. But again, I, it, it's up to you. So regardless, I've got t equals pi over 6. And then what I need you to just kind of do off, off to the side here is put in that ordered pair. And so the x coordinate is exactly square root of 3 over 2. And we're going to see where these numbers come from when we do some right triangle trig. And then we'll notice that the y coordinate is exactly 1 half. Okay, and so uh, you're going to go ahead and work around and fill these in. You're going to do what's called our primary rotation, starting right here. So I skipped 0, but obviously do, this, do the whole darn thing. And so basically we're starting here, and we're going to go once around counterclockwise kind of our primary rotation from t values of 0 all the way up to 2 pi. So if you could take a, just a little time, find that website and pull that off, that would be great. Again, I'm going to stop this lesson right now because um, we'll take the next step when you're ready. Thanks, everybody.